this weekend is Easter, season of hope, season of death, road death, that is. Not that we only kill each other at Easter. Last night, 13 people died on a road north of Pretoria. A bus and a taxi were among the vehicles involved. More than half of road deaths in South Africa are caused by alcohol. The abuse of alcohol costs our country between 10 and 20 billion rand a year. The human cost is impossible to put a value to. More than 14,000 people are killed on our roads every year. Around half of those accidents involve alcohol. It really is, is the most difficult thing because it hits you the whole time. I mean, every single day you wake up and you think, oh my God, my child's dead. And it's just, it's just the most painful thing. And it just, all day, it just goes on all day. This heart of mine, it's yours to keep. I wear it about all my Carol Smith lost her 23 year old son Chaz in September last year. A, a lyric that I wrote in a song after Chaz passed away, which was, My life is, sh is shattered and it's your head that cracked it. Because I mean, I, I remember, you know, how he died. When you wide awake, suffering, and mama always said, I gotta use. Chaz and bandmates Rory and Brandon had created Plush, which was beginning to make its mark on the South African music scene. The three were inseparable. My life with Chaz wasn't based on just the past and the present, it was based on this future, this promise, this hope, this dream that we were striving for and so many people believed we could do it. And it was this close, mm. it was there, it was like in our reach, it was like we were reaching out to touch it and someone came and cut my hand off, you know. The band was at the start of a nationwide tour when Chaz was killed. Chaz and I left the, the auditorium and went to go and pick up some friends. And he had sort of already made his way across the road. And I saw a white flash out the corner of my eye. And this, all of a sudden he just disappeared from in front of me. I mean, this person just drove straight through him as if he wasn't even there. There was rivers of blood literally within three seconds. And I mean, it's just to see something like that. Linda Barron was behind the wheel. She has been charged with culpable homicide and driving under the influence. She had an alleged blood alcohol count of 0.23, four times over the legal limit. The case is ongoing. Chaz wanted to live. He, he, he worked very hard at his career and he wanted to live. He had everything going for him. Caro refuses to see Chaz's death as an accident. Drinking and driving is, is a choice you make. There's no such thing as an accident. One doesn't drive drunk by accident. In South Africa, many make the choice to drive drunk. Statistics around drinking and driving in this country are almost double those in countries like Australia and France. Chaz, Chaz is a statistic now. He, he shouldn't be a statistic. He, 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 he was a living person who, who had all of us family who loved him and who he loved. My world is shattered. It's your head that cracked it. Caro, an alcohol and drug counsellor, is trying to make sense of her son's death by raising awareness around drinking and driving. Our roads now are dead end. Still can't believe you've been taken. She has started an initiative called SAD, South Africans Against Drunk Driving. We just need to stop people dying. I mean, every single year we lose 2,000 of our school leavers and 25,000 others are severely injured paralyzed or brain damage, and most of that's from alcohol. Professor Charles Perry from the Medical Research Council in Cape Town has been studying alcohol-related problems for a decade. Well, research done in 2004 showed that one in every two persons fatally injured on South Africans' roads, one in two was tested positive for alcohol. You know, I talk a lot about the numbers involved. One has to keep the human story in mind and to, to hold that out and to say, this is my son, it could be your son or daughter. Last year, we featured a remarkable young documentary maker, Ashley Kaimovitz. I think she crammed more into 19 years than most people cram into a lifetime. She was killed by a drunk driver. No lights, no license. She was killed instantly. Ashley's schoolmate Romy Kruger and 12 other friends have joined forces with Caro as the Cape Town branch of SAD. They have created posters using images of Chaz and Ashley to drive home the message. And they're very hard-hitting and cutting and they're personal. We want people to realise that it's actually cool to not drive drunk as opposed to the opposite. 
It's a message that Chaz's sister Philippa also drives home. I've had to grow up. I've had to suddenly realize that we've actually got to take responsibility. It's not up to other people anymore. It's up to us. And last year, you know, you didn't really see it as a problem because you never knew of anyone. All of a sudden, I've got to try and stop my friends doing it. You always hear people telling their wonderful, amusing and heroic stories of how they were so drunk. They can't remember how they got home, but they know that they just woke up in their bed the next morning. Someone like that killed Ashley, and that's not amusing or heroic. South Africans are among the heaviest drinkers in the world, consuming between 17 and 20 litres of pure alcohol per drinker per year. You know, I think the, st the statistics we have speak for themselves. I mean, I think we have a, a culture in South Africa where we think we have a right to, to drink three or four or five drinks over an evening, have a little bit to eat, get on the roads and drive. Whereas, in fact, we're, we're quite likely to be well over the legal limit for driving. Point 0.05, that's the legal limit. And you'd be surprised at how little it takes to get there. It's not an exact science, but for the average man, it's no more than two beers in an hour or two tots of spirits. For women, it's even less. I mean, everyone does it. You yeah. drink and you drop. You feel like surely you can do it, man. I mean, it's like, oh man, that's, I know that there are rules and whatever, but those for the guys that can't handle their liquor or whatever. But the fact of the matter is you make mistakes. Um, no, it has. I, I didn't think two beers was going to affect me at all. Ian Wenzel is an advanced driving instructor and go-kart racer. Last year, he participated in drinking and driving tests at Kailami Racetrack. When you got involved in these tests, what did you expect? Not much, actually. I was uh, quite confident. We had two beers in the space of about an hour and a half. And they breathalyzed us uh, throughout the whole thing. Three quarters of the way uh, through my first beer, I was uh, already over the legal limit of uh, 0.05. Two beers sent him well over the limit, and Ian started the race with a blood alcohol level of 0.07. In sort of uh, lap six or seven, uh, the reels really started to come off, and uh, had a bit of an incident with a tie wall and uh, another tipsy driver. Uh, eventually, all my inhibitions sort of went out the window as well. I started to cheat a bit and try and take a couple of shortcuts. Despite efforts to cut corners, this ace driver came in last. Making sense of the test results is criminologist Lawrence Barrett. The person's depth perception was reduced by a staggering 43%. In different words, though he was still able to see a car was approaching, his ability to judge how far it was away was reduced by an amazing 43%. It is an answer as to why so many drinking and driving collisions are head-on collisions. They start an overtaking maneuver and have got no chance of finishing it. The de de degree to which your perception reaction skills are affected, I cannot understand why the law is still so lenient on, on, drunk, on drunken drivers. Stan Beside Note is a forensic accident reconstructionist. He has investigated more than 6,500 accident scenes on South African roads. In the five years, almost six years that I've been investigating accidents, I do not know of a single case where the person that was arrested for drunken driving actually ended up doing jail time, which is a big problem in my opinion. Because at the moment what's happening, people are getting slaps on the wrist, saying naughty. And people say things like, um, but that's a first time offence. And what I say, are we each allowed to kill one person? In Ashley's case, the driver of the vehicle has not been charged with driving under the influence. Blood alcohol levels were not taken at the scene. Why do you believe that he was drunk? According to witnesses at the scene and the paramedics and the people who were, who were there first, they've said that he was drunk. If prosecution went ahead, the driver could be charged with driving without a license and culpable homicide. But it's been more than a year, and to date, nothing has happened. The whole thing, the fact that nothing's happened over a year later, it's just saying that it's okay. It's okay for him to have killed my friend, and it really is not. And it was okay for him to drive drunk because no one even bothered to test him. It's not that the laws don't exist, it's that they are not enforced. In South Africa, there seems to be a culture of acceptance. If you have guys like, for instance, one night we had an instance where the guy said, but it's the fifth time. Don't you guys have anything better to do? I mean, if he's, had, if he's been arrested five times, why is he still walking around? It's taken strong law enforcement and hard-hitting advertising campaigns in countries like Canada, Australia and the UK to bring down drunken driving statistics. Effective measures include confiscating licenses on the spot, a zero blood alcohol level for novice drivers and frequent random breath testing. For example, an adult male in Australia has a 50% chance uh, of being tested in a given year. And in South Africa, you can go for a decade or two without being tested. 
Experts and activists agree that ultimately all roads lead to the Justice Department. Our repeated requests for an interview with Justice Minister Bridget Mabandla were denied. We understand that one of the primary problems is the law and that it's not being enforced correctly. But um, Caro of, of SAD is focusing more on that while we're focusing more on changing people's mindsets. I will never, ever, ever get in the car with someone who's been drinking now. And I'm so sorry that it's taken something like this for me to actually have to go want to change. Go to our website if you want to know more about the campaign. When we come back,